السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم in the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى most gracious most merciful الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله all praise is indeed due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى blessings and salutations upon the greatest of creation the most noble of all prophets of Allah سبحانه وتعالى محمد ابن عبد الله الهاشمي القرشي صلى الله عليه وسلم his household his companions may Allah bless them all bless every one of us grant us goodness remove us from the darkness and keep us inshallah uh, within the light that Allah سبحانه وتعالى has chosen my brothers and sisters the days of supplication they are not all the same the times of supplication not all the same but that does not mean we should delay a supplication i've spoken about this in a previous episode i want to say to you that the last third of the night is definitely more likely for your dua and your supplication to be accepted on a friday you repeat the dua throughout the day because there is a specific hour and there is difference of opinion as to exactly what that hour is wherein the dua that is made shall always be accepted by Allah. So every few minutes you repeat this dua for the whole day, you stand a great, great chance. Also, when you're in Mecca, the dua is more likely to be accepted. When you're in the masjid, in the house of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're in a best blessed place. When you, are, when you have just obeyed Allah, when you have just done a good deed, there is a greater chance of that dua to be accepted. But... There is one that a lot of us don't know. When something bad has just happened, that's a good time for you to call out to Allah with the best of du'as. When you've just been oppressed, you've just been robbed, you've just had an accident, you've just lost a child, you've just suffered a great loss. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on all of, all of us. That is a time when du'a is accepted as well. So we need to realize this and call out to Allah. Uh, today I want to go through a beautiful hadith again. It's a little bit long, but it has in it supplications that encompass our entire living. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allahumma laka alhamdu kulluhu. Now he's starting off by praising Allah. Like I told you in the past, when you want to call out to Allah, you start off by seeking forgiveness, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, declaring His greatness, sending blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When we seek forgiveness, we are now on par, meaning we're on the same page. We are looking forward to what Allah has bestowed upon us and we will ask Him. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allahumma lak alhamdu kulluhu. O oh Allah, all praise, every single aspect of praise, is due to you. You own it and you deserve it and it belongs to you. Allahumma la qabida lima basatta. O oh Allah, there is no one who can hold back what you have given, which means you are in control. Wala basita lima qabadta. And O oh Allah, there is no one who can give what you have held back. Subhanallah. Imagine this is all the praise of Allah. It's a way of praising Allah. Allahumma la qabida lima basatta wa la basita lima qabadta. Oh Allah, there is no one who can hold back what you have given. And there is no one who can give what you have held back. Subhanallah. Wa la hadiya liman adlalta. No one will guide the one whom you have misguided, which means if you have chosen misguidance for someone, that's it. No one can guide them. Wala mudilla liman hadayta. And there is no one who can misguide the one whom you have guided. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us guidance and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who appreciate that guidance is in the hands of Allah. It's a dua we make every single time we pray. And even more than that, sirat al mustaqim, guide us to the straight path. What a beautiful uh, dua of uh, the Quran. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us constantly guided no matter what anyone says or does, we will never ever be misguided if the Almighty has kept us upon that beautiful path. May Allah keep us on the path. Amen. Then the dua continues. Wala mu'tiya lima manata. Similar to the previous one. O oh Allah, no one will give what you have blocked, stopped. Wala mani'a lima a'tayta. And there is no one who will block or stop what you have given. Wala muqarriba lima ba'atta. And no one can bring close that which you have kept at a distance. When Allah has kept something far away, no one can bring that close. 
ولا مبا ولا مباعدة لما قربت and there is no one who can create a distance between us and that which you have kept away or there is no one who can create a distance in that which you have kept close in that which you have kept close uh, let me say that again wala muba'ida lima qarrabta and no one can create a distance in that which you have kept close now this is very broad in meaning anything that allah has kept close no one can distance it anything that allah has kept distanced no one can bring it close whether it's a relationship whether it's physically something if allah has kept someone far if allah kept something very far very difficult etc it's allah in absolute control all this is a prelude to the dua all this is going to is the run up to this dua that we want to ask allah we are praising him the prophet sallallahu alaihi says oh allah praise belongs to you all praise belongs to you. Uh, no one can take away what you've given. No one can give what you've taken away. No one can guide whom you've misguided. No one can misguide whom you've guided. And no one can block what you have given. And no one can give what you have blocked. Oh Allah, no one can bring close what you have made far. And no one can make far what you have brought close. Allahumma absut alayna min barakatik. Here is the dua. Allahumma absut alayna min barakatik. Oh Allah, give us from your blessings. O oh Allah, give us your blessings. Bless us. Basically, we're asking for the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After all of this, we're just saying, O oh Allah, bless us. Allahumma absut alayna min barakatik. And we want your blessings. Wa rahmatik. And we want your mercy. Wa fadlik. We want your virtue. Wa rizqik. We want your sustenance. So we're asking Allah for all these things. O oh Allah, grant us your blessings. Grant us your mercy. Grant us your virtue. Grant us your sustenance. We ask this from you, O oh Allah, because you are the one whom all those qualities we made mention of apply to you. Ya Allah, ilah al-alamin, Lord of the worlds. Then we continue to say, Allahumma inni as'aluka, O oh Allah, I am asking you. Now this is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asking. We will also ask Allah with the same wording. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given this and inshallah we will be given this too. Allahumma inni as'aluka al-na'im, al-muqeem, alladhi la yahulu wa la yazul. O oh Allah, I'm asking you the gifts that are constant and continuous, that do not uh, go away, uh, that are not distracted or that are not uh, sidelined and they do not deplete. They neither go away nor are they depleted. So we, uh, we ask you to grant us uh, the gifts and we ask you to bless us in a way that it does not go away from us nor is it ever depleted. Now obviously the ultimate gift is Jannah. The ultimate gift is paradise. It will never go, it will never be depleted. But even in this world, we are asking Allah, O oh Allah, grant us that which is everlasting. When you give us something, let it last long. You know, today we have marriages that come to my mind. When people get married, we are very worried because uh, the chances or, subhanAllah, the number of people who are actually divorcing is becoming bigger and bigger. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. You know, it's a large number. And it's becoming larger. The percentage of uh, divorce has increased. So this also is seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy to let things be durable, continuous, to let them be long, uh, everlasting, and so on. So we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this. Ultimately, it is Jannatul Firdaus. Allahumma inni as'aluka al-na'ima al-muqeema alladhi la yahulu wa la yazulu. Oh Allah, I seek from you uh, that Naim, those gifts, the, the virtue and the blessings that will be everlasting, that which does not go away, nor is it depleted in any way. Then we continue, Allahumma inni as'aluka al-na'ima yawm al-aylati. Oh Allah, I ask you to provide for me on the day of difficulty, the day of hardship. Al-na'im. Ni'matun is a boon, a gift of Allah, the provision that Allah provides us with. So we are saying, oh Allah, grant us, provide for us on the day that we don't have much, on the day of poverty. Al-Aila would refer to poverty as well. It would refer to the, the day of hardship, difficulty, when we don't have much. So oh Allah, on that day, we ask you to provide for us. Wal-Amna Yawm Al-Khawf. And oh Allah, grant us peace, grant us 
security and peace, both inner and outer peace, the day of fear. The day when there is a lot of fear, that is the day of Qiyamah, but even before that, any day of fear, we're saying, Oh Allah, inni as'aluka al-amna yawm al-khawf. Oh Allah, grant me the peace, the day of fear. You know, everyone else is scared and we are calm, <laughs> we're relaxed. It happens because you call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the most calm of them all. When the people were worried, he was calm. He knew this is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why do I need to be worried? Allahumma inni a'idhum bika min sharri ma a'taytana wa sharri ma mana'tana. O oh Allah, I am seeking protection in you from the evil of what you've given us and what you have kept away from us. When Allah bestows you with something, sometimes it's a test. It can come with some evil in the sense that it can come with harm. Uh, you know, uh, Allah blesses you with children. It's a fitna. Allah blesses you with family members, with wealth. There is evil that could be within that because shaitan can entrap you uh, through a gift that was initially from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's gifts. But in it, there was a test that we failed sometimes. So we're saying, oh Allah, I seek protection in you from the evil of what you've given us and from what you have, from the evil of what you have kept away from us. Allahumma habbib ilayna al-Iman. Oh Allah, make beloved to us Iman. In a previous episode, we mentioned this part of the hadith and we actually said that it is derived from the Quranic verse in Surah Al-Hujurat, when, uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this. So, Allahumma habbib ilayna al-Iman. Oh Allah, make beloved to us al-Iman. Wazayinhu fi qulubina and beautify it in our hearts. Wakarrih ilayna al-kufra wal-fusuqa wal-isiyana. And oh Allah, make detested to us disbelief and sin and transgression. وَجْعَلْنَا مِنَ الرَّاشِدِينَ And make us from among those who are righteous, rightly guided, those who guide and are rightly guided. اللهم توفنا مسلمين O oh Allah, grant us death as Muslims, as submitters. وَأَحْيِنَا مسلمين And resurrect us as Muslims, among the Muslimin. وَأَلْحِقْنَا بِالصَّالِحِينَ And O oh Allah, uh, join us with those who are righteous and pious as well. When we are resurrected, unite us with those who are righteous and pious. غَيْرَ خَزَايَا وَلَا مَفْتُونِينَ Without being disgraced, nor being tested in a way that we fail. So this is a powerful dua of the Prophet ﷺ. I want to repeat this entire dua being such a blessed season. Imagine if Allah were to give this to us. If we repeat this so many times, I'm sure Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely hear and He will give it to us. Let me repeat this beautiful dua. Allahumma laka alhamdu kulluhu. Allahumma la qabida lima basatta. Wala basita lima qabadta. Wala hadiya liman adlalta. Wala mudilla liman hadayta. Wala mu'atiya lima mana'ta. ولا مانع لما أعطيت ولا مقرب لما باعدت ولا مباعد لما قربت اللهم ابسط علينا من بركاتك ورحمتك وفضلك ورزقك اللهم إني أسألك النعيم المقيم الذي لا يحول ولا يزول اللهم إني أسألك النعيم يوم العيلة والأمن يوم الخوف اللهم إني عائذ بك من شر ما أعطيتنا وشر ما منعتنا اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان واجعلنا من الراشدين اللهم توفنا مسلمين وألحقنا بالصالحين وأحينا مسلمين وألحقنا بالصالحين غير خزايا ولا مفتونين سبحان الله It's an amazing dua and I really ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to grant us uh, this dua and to make us from those who have Jannatul Firdaus through his mercy and through his power for indeed for him it is not 
it, it does not displace anything for Allah to grant every single one of us whatever we wish and whatever we want. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, Subhanallah, we move on to another supplication of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Again, it is about increase and protection from decrease. So in this hadith, which is also narrated in Sunan al-Tirmidhi, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said, Allahumma zidna wa la tanqusna. O oh Allah, grant us increase and not decrease. O oh Allah, grant us increase and not decrease. Zidna wa la tanqusna. O oh Allah, give us more and don't give us less. Wa akrimna wa la tuhinna. O oh Allah, honor us and don't disgrace us. O oh Allah, grant us honor. Protect us from disgrace. We only make these du'as sometimes when we have a major problem and we're worried about being disgraced from, you know, something might happen and perhaps we might be disgraced. Make the du'a all the time. Allahumma akrimna wa la tuhinna. Allahumma zidna wa la tanqusna. Allahumma akrimna wa la tuhinna. Wa a'tina wa la tahrimna. Oh Allah, give us and don't block it from us. Oh Allah, give us and don't block it from us. The first part was, Oh Allah, grant us increase and not decrease. O oh Allah, honor us and do not disgrace us. O oh Allah, give us and don't block it from us. We're talking of goodness here. Goodness in every single way. Give it to us and don't block it from us. Oh wow, that's powerful. Athirna means, O oh Allah, give us preference. And don't give preference over us. Now, we as human beings are taught that when people are in need, and we are in need. We should try our best to meet the needs of the people, even if it means for us to give preference over ourselves to others. Uh, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the Ansar, and Allah says, يُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصَةً They used to give preference over themselves, even if they needed that thing. We've heard of so many stories where uh, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, the Ansar, gave away what they needed. And they gave away the water they needed. They gave away some of the wealth that they needed and so much that they needed. So Allah praised them. But in this dua that we are speaking about right now, we're talking about the blessings and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want the mercy. So we are trying to tell Allah that, Oh Allah, don't leave us out and get to someone else, but we want that mercy. Please grant us the mercy. You know, when it comes to Jannatul Firdaus, we're all on our own. As much as we make dua for everyone else, but we want to be there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. So this is why we are saying, Athirna, give preference to us. Wala uh, alayna, And don't give preference over us. When it comes to guidance, we want to be guided. We want to be the first to be guided. This is why in another verse, uh, talking about Isma Ibrahim alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam, Wa ana awwalul mu'mineen, wa ana awwalul muslimin. Oh Allah, I'm happy that I'm the first of the believers. I'm the first of the submitters. These are beautiful du'as, beautiful statements, because it's an honor to be the first who was guided. The first who came to Allah, you have more deeds. So this is why we say, oh Allah, give preference to us. You know, in these matters here, we would like preference and don't prefer over us. So you leave us out. Wardina wardanna. Make us happy, oh Allah, and you be happy with us too. That is a powerful thing. You know, the day of Eid comes twice a year. On that day of Eid, it's a day where we give uh, charity, it's a day where we give part of the meat sometimes when it comes to Eid al-Adha, you know, the sacrifice. Uh, we give Eid, we give Sadaqat al-Fitr when it comes to the Eid al-Fitr. But it's a day given to us by Allah as a celebration for the worship that we have engaged in for that season. If it's in Ramadan or just after Ramadan, it's because of the fasting and the taraweeh and the recitation of the Quran and so much of the acts of worship that we've been engaging in. If it is uh, the Hajj, then it's because of the Hajj, it's because of the season known as Dhul Hijjah, the first days of Dhul Hijjah, the blessed days, the Ibadah that we've been engaging in. And so at the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a day of happiness. The problem is that day of happiness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, we make everyone happy but Allah. We make ourselves happy, but Allah is not happy with us because Number one, the way we dress. Number two, the fact that we miss our salah. Number three, the fact that we commit sins on that day thinking, it's a day of happiness, I can do what I want. Many people meet up for immoral activity with people whom they are going to commit immorality with. 
that should not be the case. We should never allow that to happen on the day of Eid. More so on the day of Eid, but as it is any other day, we should be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command and instruction. So here we are asking Allah in this beautiful dua that, Oh Allah, Allahum marda, no, wa ardina warda anna, wa ardina warda anna, wardina warda anna. You could say it that way. In fact, it would be more correct to say wardina instead of wa ardina because that, uh, Hamza, th there is a rule of the Arabic language. So, wardina warda anna. Oh Allah, uh, make us happy, wardina warda anna, and be happy with us. We don't just want to be happy. We want you also to be happy with us. What's the point of Allah making you happy uh, in this world and your happiness is so limited, so negative, so, so small uh, and it's all about uh, minute small things that really don't help. Uh, I'm, I'm not interested in being happy uh, at the displeasure of Allah. People get happy to sin as well. People get happy to do the wrong things and they're saying, oh, I'm extremely happy. I'm very, very delighted, but they don't even worship Allah and they don't even obey Allah's instruction and they, they become evil people sometimes because of their habits and because of so many other factors. But to themselves, they're very happy because they drank alcohol, because they might have gone to the clubs and won something in the casino, uh, they might have won the lottery, they might, you know, something might have happened, so they're happy. But Allah, is Allah happy? That's a question. So this supplication, we learn a lot from it, because while we're asking Allah to give us, we're also asking Him not to decrease. While we're asking Allah to honor us, we're also asking Him not to disgrace us. While we're asking Allah uh, to, to, to grant us or to give us, we're asking Him not to block us. While we're asking Allah to grant us preference, we're asking Him not to prefer over us. And while we're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be pleased with us, we're asking Him also, no, to please us, we're asking Him also to be pleased with us. So these are both aspects. It's easy to have just said one. But the beauty of the words of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are such that nothing is left out. Imagine if we only said, Oh Allah, grant me increase. Oh Allah, honor me. Oh Allah, uh, give me. Oh Allah, give me preference. And oh Allah, make me happy. I mean, to us, we would have been happy. We would have been excited. But there is a possibility Allah may give you, but it's not good for you. And, and then there is a decrease in a different way. Or perhaps Allah might give you and then take it away from you. Perhaps Allah might honor you and then disgrace you. Perhaps Allah might uh, give and then block. Perhaps Allah might, subhanahu wa ta'ala, might give you preference and then there's no longer uh, you being preferred. Perhaps Allah might make you happy, but He won't be happy with you. So in order to cover all of that, the Prophet sallallahu has taught us such a beautiful, beautiful dua. It is so amazing and I truly ask Allah to grant it to us in this beautiful, beautiful season during these beautiful days and nights of this lovely, lovely month. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept it from us. We repeat, Allahumma zidna wa la tanqusna wa akrimna wa la tuhinna wa a'tina wa la tahrimna وَآثِرْنَا وَلَا تُؤْثِرْ عَلَيْنَا وَرْضِنَا وَرْضَ عَنَّا بِرَحْمَتِكَ يَا أَرْحَمَ الرَّاحِمِينَ Normally, you know, when you're asking Allah and you've just completed the dua that is the sunnah, uh, it's good to say through your mercy, O oh, oh you who is the most merciful of those who have mercy, بِرَحْمَتِكَ يَا أَرْحَمَ الرَّاحِمِينَ May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly have mercy upon every one of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us during these days and nights. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the best of the rest of this particular series. There are only two more episodes remaining. Inshallah, we meet again. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرَكَاتُهُ